I'm honestly happy to see that we have not yet reached the point where you're doing the handy, the tandy half shave of the head. Uh, kind of gives me good. It makes me feel good about where we are in this pandemic. I was starting to kind of get uh, a full beard going, so I, I thought I'm gonna keep it respectable. I guess our new movie is an origin story. Every hero should have one. I want The Rock to play me. Mm, never gonna happen. When you were getting into this part and finding your personal voice for Shaggy, what was your process? I'll tell you, it was very stressful because it's a character that I've loved forever. And and uh, I'm so used to the Casey Kasem voice, obviously, is one of the most iconic. <laughs> and then Matthew Lillard, I thought, did a, an amazing job. Like there was a ghost right behind me, isn't there? It was stressful because I my voice is different than than theirs. And uh, one of the things that they they put me at ease when I was coming in, they said, "Don't worry about copying older uh, voices. You can kind of do your own thing." And and so it was trying to trying to find a voice that was you know, not wildly off from what Shaggy was, but but a voice that I could actually do. Uh, so, you know, it was a lot of experimentation and trying to, trying to I, I study so much and practice so much, and then pretty much all the study and practice goes out when you get into the recording booth and it just kind of, what comes out, comes out. So it's, it's, um, yeah, what, what an honor to do this voice, and, and uh, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun, but but there definitely was a stressful side to it. Look around, man. The clean, modern aesthetic, the cool blue color palette. We're in Ikea. the Falcon Fury. Did you say Ikea? Nope, I said Falcon Fury, just like you. Over the years, I mean, going back to the late 60s, Daphne has been played by so many great voice actors. I'm curious just what your process was for finding your version of Daphne and kind of what you wanted to say with the character. Daphne is such a positive, encouraging force. Um, she's funny. I, I, you know, I thought a little bit about putting Karen from Mean Girls in a little bit. I'm a mouse, duh. But to me, it's just, I, I you just have to stay comfortable and, and charismatic and I don't know. I, I, I think I've played a lot of characters like that. So it wasn't it wasn't too hard. The writing's really good. You know, it, it, it lends itself to it being very easy. Huh, trace amounts of mustache oil, 12 year old scotch. Ugh, is the bad guy my dad? One thing that uh, I frequently hear is that you kind of want to avoid the mustache twirling villain archetype. And what's cool about Dick Dastardly is that he is a character who's specifically born out of that mold. My friends call me Dick. In kind of taking on this part, to what degree you found yourself leaning into that kind of bigger than a uh, big. <laughs> the job of this film, apart from the fact that I was raised watching Dick Dastardly and, and Penelope Pitstop and Wacky Races, and of course Scooby and the gang, um, the job was in the recording studio to make Tony Savoni laugh, the brilliant uh, writer-director. And when you did succeed in making him laugh, uh, you couldn't use the take because he'd been laughing on the microphone. If I were you, I'd run! <laughs> That's good. That's really good. Uh, and so he encouraged me and I'm sure everybody else to go as far over the top as you possibly could. And you're right. Uh, people who play villains generally try and create something nuanced and relatable and motivated. And then every now and again, you are just, you know, let out of the stable and told to run as fast as you can in every direction until you hit the walls. And uh, uh, even with Dick, though, without spoiling too much, there's a person there underneath. And you've got to watch till the end of the film, which I hope the entire planet does. Uh, and you'll see that he's not everything you think he is. <laughs> he's a lot of what you think he is. When it comes to uh, actors in animated work who also do live action, I'm curious about just your experience seeing the finished film and like if you watch it knowing that you're uh, voicing Shaggy or if you're able to kind of create a certain level of disconnect. You don't have the, like in a live action show, when you're watching, you're you're hearing your voice and seeing your face. So it's really hard to watch and go and get into whatever this character is. You're just always, at least I personally am, am always critical of myself. So so it's a little easier with a, an animated show because you, you do, but, but it's still weird. There's a part of you that's going like, oh, I hear my voice. That's not, people aren't gonna buy this. It's, you know, <laughs> it, so it's, it's, a, it's interesting. It takes a while to get used to. I'm very emotional. Do you have snacks? How much did the role of Daphne change through development of this film? Oh, I don't think it did very much in my, from, from my perspective. I mean, I, 
you know, I've, I don't know how many times I went in, maybe four times the total over the year and a half that we've been doing it. So to me, she hasn't changed that much. Things have gotten a little funnier and a little quicker between characters. But no, she, they, you know, they're very, it was very solid, the script. Hails taxis, obliterates ghost dogs. Who knew? Was it helpful to just have Pony Cervoni there, just knowing that he had this history with Scooby-Doo going back like a full decade? It's just so wonderful to work with him. Um, and, and he makes you feel, yeah, really supported and, and pushes you into a lot of directions. So if you're, you know, uh, that, that made it way easier because I overthink everything and then I'd come in, um, be a little stressed out and it just immediately became fun. He was essential. Like he, he is the vibe. He's, he gets you where you need to go. I mean, you, it is, it can be really, really daunting and really challenging to do an animated movie because you're just a booth by yourself. Well, I, I mean, n n without the other actors, but he is every character. You know, he plays Shaggy and Scoob, Scooby so well that it was just, you didn't need anything else. It was just, he's, he's everything. He was great. A big part of this film is about the relationship between people and their dogs. And that works on three different levels. And that yeah, includes yeah. Dastardly. And that really is his emotional core. And I'm kind of curious just about the kind of conversations that you had with Tony Cervoni about that part of the character. The great thing about animation is you record it and then you record it again and then they try it and then they redraw it and then you record it again. And there were lots of different uh, iterations of uh, Dick and his journey and uh, how much he did or didn't love, care about, was invested in Miss Muttley. Uh, we threw all of it out there uh, and they, you know, they cherry picked to tell the story. So uh, we had lots of conversations about how selfish he was, how selfless he was, how much he thought he cared about Muttley, but actually was, you know, uh, really driven by trying to get to the gold and the treasure and stuff. And uh, and I love where they ended up because we we, sh we shot, we shoot cartoons, I don't know, whatever it was. Uh, uh, we uh, recorded, created many different versions of him. Uh, I think they got the right one at the end, the balance between emotion and uh, unrepentant narcissism. Okay, Rick. No, I'm not a Rick. I'm a dick with a D. Rick with a D. Hmm. Da, 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 dick. Well, 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 Rick. If you could have voiced another character in Scoob other than Dick Dastardly, who would you have wanted to voice? I think Mark Wahlberg did a fantastic job as Blue Falcon, but he's hilarious. That's a fantastically funny part. I did call you little, you pipsqueak. Uh, I don't know if I want to be a mystery ink because uh, I'm too old. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't possibly do Scoob as well as Scoob has done. So yeah, it'd have to be, it'd have to be Blue Falcon. I wanted to play Velma. I, I wanted that challenge of just having all the information and just saying it really quick and being very witty and dry. And um, I just love, I, I love that character so much. I love all of the characters growing up, but I, yeah, I would have totally in a heartbeat played Velma. But Gina is, I love her voice so much. <laughs> I'd like to shake the hand of whoever created this. I don't know. I, I mean, it might've been uh, Fred, maybe Captain Caveman. Uh, I, all the, the casting of this movie is so fantastic and, and uh, and so I think about, you know, I, I think about all these characters I'm bringing up and there are such amazing people who are doing the voices of them. So I'm, I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm, I am, I am delighted to have, have uh, gotten a chance to, to do the role of Shaggy. It just was a, an honor beyond belief. Here we go! If you want, you can pull over and drop us off here. We'll walk home. You really think we should do this? Yeah. Well, there is no I in Scooby and Shaggy. No, all good. Well done. Reel them in. Oh, really, Velma? I thought he wasn't on our side.